Hello, I'm Recoded Zaphod and welcome to a snapshot redstone video. So uh, I'm in one of the 1.15 snapshots and uh, it's one where we've introduced honey blocks. Um, so yeah, i am uh, been looking into honey block uh, item conveyor belts. So the idea is you uh, drop an item and then uh, you can get it to move around as if it's on a conveyor belt. So you've got something like this, which is a uh, fairly simple. It's a piston feed tape and uh, you're running a clock around the outside of it and getting it to uh, push your item around, uh, which needs to be on one of the honey blocks. But if it's on one of the terracotta, it'll slide across and uh, back off of it. And uh, let's just stop this. All right. Um, and yeah, you can do something like this, but because you've got the clock going around the outside, um, the timings for that are limited by uh, how your clock goes. And of course you have to build it larger than your actual um, piston feed tape. Um, also, the, there's a problem with these where um, you have to alternate here um, to stop the honey blocks all sticking to each other. So if you had just honey blocks, by the time I get pushed by this one, it would push all of the ones attached to them along here across with it. Um, so an another solution to um, piston feed tapes, instead of having a clock around the outside, is you can do stuff like this where an observer detects a change to this block and then makes this one fire, which uh, if I click this lever, you should see happened there. So the idea is if this detects a change here, it very quickly fires the next block. So when the blocks get pushed across, they'll get an update and these will get pushed out. And uh, yeah, it's quite small. And of course you only need to put it every time um, you change direction. So you don't need a clock attached to these. Um, you can just have them on every corner where you turn. And of course you're gonna have to turn every uh, 12 blocks because that's the push limit of the pistons. Uh, so yeah, that's a neat trick. But unfortunately, when you start introducing honey blocks, um, honey blocks move observers with them. So if you had them here, it would pick up the observer and push the observer and the piston just along and out the way uh, when the blocks are coming in. So yeah, you can't actually use that system for a honey block conveyor. Um, another option which you can do with slime blocks is you can have a torch on your corner, um, which then powers the slime block, powers redstone next to it, um, which uh, yeah powers the piston. So if you put the slime block there, you see it powers it round and that fires. But unfortunately, that doesn't work with honey blocks because honey blocks don't transmit power in the same way slime blocks do and terracotta blocks do. So the solution for these problems, um, I think, is putting a second layer in of just um, terracotta, glazed terracotta blocks. Um, because this way, these can go past without getting stuck to things like observers. Um, and they can be powered by redstone torches, if you want to do it that way. And uh, then you just get it to power two pistons. So you have your conveyor belt set up on top with the alternating pattern. And your glazed terracotta on the bottom. Um, main reason I'm using glazed terracotta on the bottom and not just some random other block. Um, say a pumpkin or... Uh, actually, the pumpkin, pumpkins break. But uh, just some other block... Uh, like stone is uh, if you've got stone down there when the top piston pushes um, it's thinking the stone is attached to the honey block and so counts it towards the block limit uh, the push limit there might be fancy ways around this with timing different pushes correctly but um, if you just go with glazed terracotta uh, you can have 12 along the bottom and 12 along the top because the pistons are pushing the two uh, rows separately okay so um, you can see here if I I put in the corner bit, and then if I update the observer just behind here, you see it pushes both out. Um, if you want to, you can do uh, the torch one with this as well, like I said, um, which I actually prefer for the main reason that it's easier to turn on and off because you can just turn the torch off and then even if blocks end up on top of it, it just doesn't do anything. Whereas with the observer clock, um, it's quite difficult to turn off because obviously blocks are going to keep moving in front of that and it's going to keep firing. So you'd have to 
um, power this redstone and get the pistons to extend and stay extended. But then when you want it to go again, you're going to have to get the redstone off and then the one before it needs to go back on. So yeah, I just figured it was easier to uh, use this system because it's easier to activate and deactivate. So you can see I click this and then I've got this rather long conveyor belt. So if I uh, throw an item down here, um, you see it gets around and at every one of these points uh, it pushes. So here you could do a really long conveyor belt. Um, so you can have the 12 blocks here. You see it just shifts a couple blocks this way and then I do 12 again. Um, so you can have a system and you can extend it really far and just have uh, blocks being transported across great distances um, without water streams. So you could use this in somewhere like the nether. I'm just going to switch this off. So I'm going to hit this. But this one seems quite slow because you have to wait for all of the pistons to push before the first one gets to push again because you've only got the one extra column of blocks in here because these ones are going to be empty while that one's full and then when that empties you get one block, um, uh, one column full here and then of course that changes to here and yeah, that has to progress all the way around before it pushes again. So uh, what you can do to uh, get it going faster, as you see here I've only got four but I've actually got two of the corners um, filled in. Um, this way you do actually have to activate them all at the same time which again is another reason to use um, the torch design rather than the observers because it's easier to make sure you're activating them all at the same time because you're just um, turning off your off switch as it were and then the ones which need to power at the right time well they've got the blocks above them so they do their powering um, and the ones which don't you're not powering at the wrong time um, like you might with an observer chain if you powered the back of them then the pistons might fire and stop the other ones pushing forwards so yeah another reason I, I quite like this design um, but if I flick this you can see it's going around quite fast so partly is because I've only got four here instead of I think there's eight piston uh, in, in this setup um, so you'd expect it to be twice as fast to get around but this is actually four times as fast because I've um, got every other piston um, has got blocks in front of it so this from what I've been experimenting with, it's the fastest I can get it going. Um, and I can't see any other way to get it going faster. Um, you might notice there's actually a slight delay in here. The bottom one and the top one are slightly offset. And that's because of this repeater up here. Um, but it doesn't matter that it's offset because all of them are offset by the same amount from the bottom and top rows. And the bottom rows are there to trigger the top rows. So, yeah. As long as um, they're all working relative to each other and these bottom pistons are firing as soon as a block gets in here, um, which obviously it's not going to do right now because uh, it's off, um, then you've got it as fast as it can be. And I think because it's just redstone leading off of a powered block, I think this is the fastest you can get it. I'm not sure if there's some additional ways you can get it with... Um, making sure you update the piston like half a uh, like a tick early or something but um yeah without without making it overly complicated this is probably the fastest you can get it and of course if you applied this to this design and had ed every other piston um with extra blocks in front of it and then all linked up to the power um then you could get that one moving at the same speed this one is despite having more uh piston corner points of course, with this, that would defeat the purpose of trying not to have um, a redstone wire leading all the way around it. Um, because, of course, if you want to turn it all off, you would need power going to not just one of these, but to every single one of these, and to become from a central source, which uh, turns them all on at exactly the same time. Um, so you'll see down here, although I've got repeaters in, I've got exactly one repeater to each of these. Um, so flicking this turns it all off or on at exactly the same time. Right. The next bit that um, I'm doing here is you might notice this just here where an observer is powering this piston every time something happens and this is my method for getting items off of your conveyor belt. 
So if I have an item, say here, you watch it going round, and it appears to have got stuck here. Ah, okay. So this is something else to notice, um, is if it gets between blocks, it doesn't actually get moved because it's always partially over one of the terracotta blocks. And the way things move on here is, uh, let's uh, get enough of this to drop a bunch. If it's on the honey block, it's actually slightly inside the honey block. Um, so you can see it actually sits slightly underneath the edge of a block, whereas on the terracotta, it's above it. And that's how the honey block drags it, is when its hitbox intersects it. Um, so if it's straddling the two blocks, um, then the terracotta block is holding it up, so the honey block can't take it. And then when they move and the next block comes in, the terracotta block is still underneath part of it, so it's still held out of the chain. Um, so this is most notably a problem when you're putting items into the system. So uh, I've got a system like this with a water stream for putting this in. And um, basically, using trapdoors, it aligns it to make sure that the items... And I just picked those up, didn't I? Did I? Ooh, what's happened there? That is not something I've seen before, and that's because I forgot to put ice underneath it. One second. So with ice underneath, um, you can throw items in here and then they get aligned on the trapdoor so they can't go past it because they're going that way, they go all the way into it. And uh, then they go along this water stream and again hit a trapdoor and then they're caught here uh, where they won't be on the edge um, on either direction. Because of course, even if you're on the edge here like this and it looks fine, when it turns the corner, um, it'll become a problem. So yeah, can't have that. So if I turn this back on, there we go. And then start putting items in through the water stream. You'll see they're all getting picked up. They go around and then this piston pushes them all off into this hopper. Okay. So uh, I'm now going to show you how to build this corner piece which I think is the best corner piece to be using. Um, admittedly, if you prefer one of the others, um, you know, you can pause the video and look at how they function. Um, or if you, you know, prefer something like this because you actually don't want to be using honey blocks, you want this for something else. I imagine there are uh, better videos for that. But again, yeah, you should be able to see where redstone is on things like this if you uh, pause the video in a few places. But uh, I'm going to give a quick tutorial on this system um, and then the entrance um, and the exit systems. Okay, so I'm going to start with any block on the bottom. Um, you want it to be able to conduct redstone power. So um, not honey, not uh, glass, uh, you're basically not transparent blocks. Right, you put a torch on top of it and then this is where you have your corner. Um, of your piston feed tape and this is going to be a terracotta layer around here um, and at this point you need to decide which direction your conveyor belt's going because this is a sort of uh, mono-directional one because your pistons are only pushing in one direction um, so then you actually want to go out here and just put that temporary block in so you can place two pistons so one at that level and one higher and you can remove the temporary block um, and then using any block you like, you want a block next to this torch, then next to a piston, and then you want two behind the top piston, and two next to this one. And then redstone goes on all of these. So you'll see at some point, uh, probably when you place the redstone dust on this one, uh, the bottom piston will fire. Um, and then here, you need a repeater. Let's uh, grab that and that will power the top piston. So now whenever there's a block there, both pistons will fire. The top one's slightly delayed, but like I said, because it's the same delay all the way around and the bottom one is uh, virtually instant, um, it will keep it at the maximum speed. So yeah, this is the, the whole corner piece, if you like. And then of course you want to put in your honey blocks and you want them to be uh, alternating. So you don't want two honey blocks next to each other. Um, if you end up with the design like one over here, 
where you want it all to turn off on one corner, um, you're actually going to end up with an odd number going around, which means you can't have honey block, terracotta, honey block, terracotta, because you get back round and you'll be on the wrong block when you loop back round. So you should see somewhere around here, if I can find it, is two terracotta blocks right next to each other. And this is fine. It does mean any items which land here um, will have to wait until two pushes of the piston to get caught on the honey block and then dragged along. But that's not really that much time, um, at least relative to the amount of time it takes to actually transport it the whole distance, particularly if you've got a long one like this. Um, which is one of the main benefits of this sort of system, is you don't have to have really long redstone wires wrapping around them. The next bit I'm going to show you how to build is the uh, item ejector from your conveyor belt, which you take an observer and you have it pointing in to the bottom row of your conveyor belt, and that's pointing outwards, and then you want that going into a repeater, um, and this is to make sure the pulse is long enough to not cause issues, um, and then a block there, and a block above, and they need redstone on top of them. Let's grab that. And then you're going to want a piston. Um, I'm going with normal pistons for this. It could be sticky, it doesn't really matter. Um, the point is, when it's pushing items off, it's extended, and extended, it can't be dragged along by the honey block, so we don't have to worry about it getting dragged along at any point. So yeah, this will push off every time a block goes past. Um, admittedly, half of them will be terracotta blocks um, in this place, where pushing won't do anything because your, all your items will be arriving on the honey blocks and not on the terracotta blocks. But uh, getting it to pulse once every other push, particularly if you might end up with two terracotta next to each other if you've got an odd numbered cycle, um, is getting quite complicated. So just keeping it like this and having it push every time is much simpler and works much better and of course you want that pushing off into a hopper if i can just grab that there we go so on the face of the piston side um you want a hopper just here make sure you don't have it on the top row um, because then it's going to get dragged along by the honey blocks uh, at this point you might decide that you want um uh, edges to this so if you grab a block like say glass and just put that around here um not that one there uh that way when it pushes it'll push it and it'll fall in here and you can't have blocks here because they'll get dragged along by the honey blocks unless they're removable so you could have say terracotta here just to make sure items pushed off aren't gonna fall out so you can do that as well if you want um in my experience most of them have ended up going straight into the hopper so that hasn't been an issue. And the same for the entire um, conveyor belt. Uh, you might find that uh, you actually want to put edges on it, and that's completely fine. Just again, make sure nothing's gonna be next to where the honey blocks go, because they will drag those blocks along, or at least try to, and that might ex uh, exceed the piston uh, push limit and then break the whole thing. So for the uh, aligning items to get them in, uh, I think a water stream is actually better. I did try with a dispenser uh, and then trapdoors, but usually what ends up happening is ones which would be too far over end up just caught on top of the trapdoor um, rather than being aligned by it. So yeah, I found water streams are much better. Um, so you can see here, when you get to the corner, um, you have some ice under there. Uh, I've got blue ice because it's the slipperiest, so I just work with that. Um, packed ice should work just as well. Um, and the items will go under this slab. Um, some people use uh, pressure plates to stop the water flowing around uh, into the next source block, um, but you don't want that here because that will power the trapdoor and get it swinging up and down as items go over it if the pressure plate is one which is sensitive to items going over it. So yeah, I've gone with the top half slab. So the water pushes the items in, they go through that. They then get aligned by this trapdoor here which uh, just needs to be up against this side. It doesn't matter if you put it in as on the bottom and then swing it up or on the top and swing it down, but it needs to be up against this edge. Uh, and then items going along here, you want the trapdoor in place. So you can see it's here um, and it's in that top block there. So you might need to put a temporary block in here to place it. Um, 
But yeah, once it's there, you can uh, remove any block that's underneath because that's going to get picked up by the honey blocks. And that should make sure all your items get aligned properly. All right, so that's going to be all from me for this uh, snapshot redstone video. Um, hopefully it's giving you some stuff to think about. Maybe you can make some improvements on this design, or if you've got some feedback on it, let me know. Um, if there's anything I didn't show you, which you want me to show you, um, yeah, let me know in the comments, and uh, I might be able to do, you know, a follow-up video. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's going to be all, and uh, thank you very much for watching.